everyone, welcome, and you are joining us for qualifying ahead of the final round of MotoGP Esport in 2022. It's round five. It's the Global Series Decider. Double points on offer. You've heard it all, I'm sure, before, but it is a big one. And we're going to be qualifying first up at Argentina, the Termas de Rio Hondo circuit. Following that, you'll be able to check out on YouTube or MotoGP Esports' uh, very own website. Qualifying from the Mandalika circuit as well in Indonesia as we head there for the very first time. Jack Appiard and Jack Goss took through these 15 minutes. Are we going to see something interesting? Let's hope so. Are we going to see something that could well affect the uh, eventual location of our 2022 title. Let's see. Could it be this man, Andrea Severo? Who knows? I mean, we could go down. Could be. We could go down the list of, of everyone asking, could it be this man? And it will be the same answer every time of maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but insightful stuff. I know. That's why they pay me the big bucks, mate. That sort of analysis. You can't get that <laughs> anywhere else. Here's Piero Ricciuti, the wild child, the factory the catty man. Went well last time out, didn't he? He did. Duty. A pair of second places. He just started to find his feet. Uh, not really someone that we're thinking is going to be right in the heart of this championship fight. He's yeah. going to need a, a pretty big final round. But it of does. course, with, with double points, <laughs> it can quite easily swing. It certainly can, yeah. I mean, Piero at the minute, let's uh, just tee it up for you how the championship sits before we uh, set the grid for the first race of the Final round of the Global Series here in 2022. So Adrian leads it with 93 points, and he's only 12 and a half ahead of reigning champ Trastevere on the Yamaha. Of course, now 12 and a half points uh, if Adrian was to finish second in the first race tomorrow and Trastevere was to win it, then that gap would come down to two and a half points because, as we rightly pointed out, double points on offer, so it all kind of amplifies things a little bit here. So if you are Piero Ricciuti, uh, the Ducati man then, well, you are still in this very, very easily indeed because he is only on 70 points, but 23 points back from the top. I mean, you know, if he goes and wins a couple of races and say Adrian finishes second or third in those races, then Piero would end up eventually with more points than Adrian. So it can very, very easily change once we start adding double points into the mix, just sprinkling on a little bit of spice for the finale here. So, into the first laps then. We do love a bit of spice as yeah, well. Yeah, we do, we? we do. East Boy is all about spice, really, Mass picante, it? the better. <laughs> Mass picante. <laughs> that is the way, really, in East Uh Coming down then to the final sector just about now. Christian, of course, he's another man that was on form recently. Of course, in that third, well, it was the third round, wasn't it, where he did the double? It was, yeah, round yeah. three, halfway, uh, it's yeah. the halfway stage of, of this season. Eyes on him. Uh, this round, anyway. Jack Goss actually turned the aircon on in our uh, studio here to record the uh, the commentary for the qualifying. Stop, stop waffling um, about the aircon. We've got a lap time here. And oh. it's cold as well. Oh, as Adrian comes across the line, and here we go. Laps are in. Sorry, you took my attention away. I was cold, you see. <laughs> so, Christian, first marker, 31.6. Instantly bettered. Ricciuti goes top, 31.5. Vindex across the line. Good lap from yeah, him. Good lap. Less good. than two temps away in third. Doesn't look like Davide Galinia, Spadalongo, Tatigo. We're not really expecting them to be challenging for pole position. Andreas Severi, however, could well do. Oh, but not, not with that the lap. lap he was hoping for. Just under half a second adrift is the Suzuki man. So a lot to find for him. But after the first Ooh. runs then, as Christian MM17 just crashes out in the background, it's Ricciuti, this man, that leads the way on 131.5. A tenth of a second exactly his advantage after these opening runs. Yeah, not bad effort then from Piero, of course, 131.5. That's pretty good. We've seen him through practice. They're roughly around that sort of lap time. So uh, there's not too much more to come, but we shall see what they can pull out in the last 10 minutes at least. Of course, Trastevere, the only one on the board at the moment without a lap time. He'll be very, very keen to change that. We've seen Trastevere have a couple of bad qualifying so far in 2022. And if he is to retain his title, uh, 12 and a half points behind the man that he needs to beat at the moment, then he's going to want to be on that front row at the very least. And not putting a lap time on the board after the opening runs does 
put pressure on yourself. It does. The, the pressure really does start to build because you know with the clock ticking, these guys likely during a qualifying session will get what? Three fast laps at it. Normally Roughly, what we yeah. see, three, sometimes four at the shorter circuits. So he knows next time around, if he's to make a, a slight mistake and go over track limits and the lap's cancelled, then everything comes down to that last lap then. And often we've seen previous when that does happen, they almost just ride within themselves to make sure that they get a lap on the board because the last thing they want to do is to be qualifying dead last, having not even set a lap time. So a big 10 minutes coming up for Trastevere here. Yeah, definitely. A 10 minutes that could prove pretty pivotal, of course. Uh, that first race tomorrow, when we go racing for the finale, you certainly can't win the championship in that one, but you can definitely lose it, so he does need to be careful, that is for sure. Uh, I have to say about Vindex, actually, because he's kind of really grown into the series, hasn't he, he has, for, yeah. as we've gone. He's got better and better in qualifying. The races still aren't quite right up the sharp end, but uh, he has got better. Um, so certainly Vindex doing no harm to himself at all at the minute, uh, third and on the end of that front row at the moment. That would be his best qualifying performance of the year. So if he can manage to pull that off, then a big round of applause to that man and a pat on the back. Here is Trast then, back out on track with a new rubber fit to his Monster Energy Yamaha M1. And he just builds his way through the lap here. That a super important corner as they ask for traction, ask for oh. the power down the monstrous back straight. This, of course, where Alicia Spargro at the third attempt was able to better Jorge Martin, and he's very deep there. It's a late apex, but I'm not sure you want to be running oh. that deep. And then flick it left, who turns six and seven. Again, just asking for traction on the side of the tire for so much of the lap here. Very, very difficult to get it stopped there as well. But he does a good job. Brings it back to the apex again. Another double apex right-hander there. This very, very steep, actually, from having ran the circuit when we were there. What? Feels like a lifetime ago in, in March. A real incline there as they go left and then right. And once again, one of the characteristics of Argentina. On the side of the tyre, asking, asking, asking. There is in real life a bit of a bump there as well. And we saw the Ducati guys, Pekka Banyaya in particular, throughout free practice three and qualifying in the end as well. Just struggling to get the thing settled through that bump. As Trask comes across the line and we said about putting down a marker. That's exactly what he's done. Fifth for Trask, four tenths off. Not the best lap of his career, but yeah. good enough, something to build on. Yeah, it's not too bad. I don't think he'll be entirely pleased, but something that does look a little more promising at the moment is these two red splits from Adrian, the man that leads the World Championship at the moment. Lost the crown last year to Trastevere, he did. And looking right now to go and plant himself on pole position, although he does have competition coming in behind in the shape of Pierre Ricciuti and his brother Christian MM17 as well. He's gone orange through the third split, personal best, and he's only two and a bit tenths off the top, so he's certainly not going to be too far off from improving and pinching a front row position from Vindex or possibly even his brother. Let's see what he can do coming across the line now. Adrian, the 2020 world champ, goes Ooh. to second, so wow. certainly not bad. Was that three thousandths? Wow, that's pretty close. So it's certainly a very good last sector indeed then from Adrian. I'm loving the tactics that these guys are using through the final corner. Absolutely <laughs> <Nail it. laughs> zero attempt whatsoever to keep the thing inside track limits. Run body with Christian MM17. It's just flat chat, full gas Whoa. to get to the start finish line as much as possible. And it proved to be a useful tactic for Christian as he goes top of the pile. So 34 hundredths of a second then covering the front row at the minute. That really can't get too much closer, can it? So that's a pretty good effort then from those top three. Uh, Trastevere still down there in fifth. Nothing going for him at the moment. We do have Andreas Severi actually, one of the big hitters. Of course, we haven't mentioned him too much, but he is third in the championship at the moment. Uh, what is he? Only 13 points off the lead. So still very much in this. And he goes to fourth. So that's not too bad at all. Look how tight oh, that Suzuki is. Suzuki, man. What, what did he go off? Was it 1,000th behind Atrian? Yeah. So now we've got 35 hundredths covering the top four. And four thousandths of a second splitting the men second, third, and fourth. Pretty close. Yeah, very close. I was going to say, couldn't be closer, but uh, I mean, it could, it, it could be. Yeah. It, it yeah. could be 
two one thousandths of a second. But still, very close regardless if we're, if we're not nitpicking. So five minutes to go then. Christian leading the way from Ricciuti and Adrian. Second row as things stand. Severi, Vindex and Trast. A good performance. This by Vindex, we mentioned it earlier on. But yep. despite another couple of laps coming in, it, it looks as though he's improved as well. Two tenths of drift. Good stuff from him. Uh, Jack Hammer, seven. He'll be... Disappointed with that, I think. Hoping for a bit more ahead of Spadalongo, Davide Galini, Tatigo, and Mr. TFTW. Everybody piling down pit lane then. Yeah, I think we're about to get a, a final flurry. I aren't believe we? so. In the last I believe so. A couple of minutes here. Seems Everyone. they're all just heading back to the pits for maybe a couple of final small tweaks to the suspension. Of course, if you didn't know, you could do that in the MotoGP game. You can. You can go in and edit your bike settings to your heart's content. There's all sorts of stuff. Suspension settings, rake and trail. Gearing. You can change the gearing. You can change the size of the discs that you have on the front and the rear. So there's quite a lot that you can do in the game. It's very good indeed. Yeah, plenty to be able to, to tweak around with. And, and these guys do do that on a regular basis as well as Trask just gets himself set. And fires his way out to the final corner. Here we go then. Is this going to be Trast's final flying lap of the session? Uh, he may well get across the line for another one after this, but whether those tyres are going to offer enough grip for it to be a competitive lap, we'll have to wait and see. But a big lap regardless, though, for the three-time champion. Back at the second row at the moment, chasing in the championship as well. We'll be hoping to be up onto the front row. Nothing going so far. No. Gray through the first split for Trastevere. So that is not the plan that he wanted to put into action right now. But as Jack Riley says, he might well get time for another lap here. Although, what the eSport guys do tell us is that it's not necessarily that you can do a second lap on the tyres. It's maybe just the tyre temperature and it gives away a little bit less feeling for them. So possibly he might not actually have enough time if he has to wait for those tyres to cool down to fly onto a second lap. But he's making it count now as he is on a PB through the second split. I wouldn't say that it's going to be a, a super lap this, given the fact that he was grey in the first sector and he's already nearly half a second adrift of Christian. So he really needed to be improving everywhere around the lap and, and big improvements as well to find himself competing for that top four, which as we said, is super, super tight at the moment. But he's on course to post a better lap time. But is it going to be oh, oh, all a mistake? Well, I wonder if he just bailed out of that entirely. Straight into pit lane. But he's going to... He's up against the clock now. He is, yeah. Two minutes 20, two minutes 15 left. An outlap is going to be, what, 140 maybe? Something like that? So, yeah, something. 140, 145. So the clock is ticking for him to get back out on track. We can see pit at the moment. Yeah. Has he managed to get back out? We'll have to wait and see. Meanwhile, as you say, Ricciuti red through that opening split out of turn five now flicks it left for turn six back down to a improving lap time but he can't be a million miles away here Ricciuti back to Adrian it looks as though third is going to be his best certainly not going to improve on oh, oh where did that maybe come not from? where did that come from <laughs> he was grey in sectors one two and three and that final split must have been absolutely sensational. Adrian, out of nowhere, takes a provisional pull with just over a minute to go. Incredible then, Adrian. Not too sure what he did in the final split. We picked him up very late, so we didn't really see it. But yeah, whatever he did, he wow. pulled it out of the hat there, didn't he? Christian, of course, let's keep an eye on this now because he's grey as well. But as we <laughs> saw Adrian go and pull that out the bag there, we need to keep an eye on this right to the very flag now. I'm going to stop myself from saying the same thing. Although I'm sure there'll be some Christian and LCR oh, supporters bails out of it. Bails out of it. Not going to be pole position, and that with 45 seconds remaining will be that second at best for Christian MM17. Adrian, as you can see, the red exclamation mark next to his name has gone over track limits. So that 131.499 is the lap time to beat with now 30 seconds left. Just keeping an eye on Trastevere's name to see if he does come flying through the first split or not. There's only 20 seconds left on the clock. Um, 
Ooh. certainly needs to be close as we see Piero going red and now Andreas Saveri going red. So here we go. This really is a last gasp attempt coming in from both the factory Suzuki it's and crashed. the Catty. Ah, oh, Piero's gone down. That's a shame. Huge shame, but we'll stay on board then with Andreas Saveri. We know they've been using this slingshot line to the line. What the can trust. he do? Oh, oh, and he crashes fourth. the loss of line, but does improve, but not his position. Fourth on the grid, head of the second row. That's not so bad for Andrea then. Trust crashes as well, so it's going to be the second row for him. Vindex, three grey splits, comes across the line. He will stay fifth, so we're just waiting on who? Davide Galina? Yeah, Davide Galina and Mr. T. So, I mean, you would have to say it looks as though it's going to be sixth spot for Trust Evere then. With the chequered flag now out, let's see Davide Galina. Yeah, Can we see him on track? Two PBs here. Yeah. I don't, I mean, Galina would be a turn up for the Bucks if he's to fire himself up onto that second row of the grid. Yep. Does only need to find two attempts to get onto that second row, so we'll see what he can do. Unfortunately, we're not seeing him, but we're keeping our eyes on the timing tower there on the left, and it is another PB through the third sector. So we'll just see, is that him coming down now? Oh, we can actually see him now coming down into the penultimate corner. Of course, a very tricky one there on the is. front end. Oh, Diving through gone. on the Aprilia. Is he going to come across the line to improve? Oh, this is going to be... He does! Oh, wow! Way. On to the second row. Oh, wow. Six. Where did that come from? Wow. What so a lap. does that mean Trastevere is on to the third row? He is. Seventh on the grid for the three-time world champion. What a disaster for Trastevere. Meanwhile, all going to plan so far for our championship leader looking to reclaim the title that he lost last year. Adrian will start pole ahead of his brother Christian and Piero Ricciuti. Row two of the grid, Andrea Severi, good performance by Vindex and Davide Galini, that late lap bumping him to six. Trast has a mountain to climb, starting seventh ahead of Jack Camus, Badalongo and the final row of the grid, Tatigo and Mr T.